ever wondered what happens when a virtual world collides with the palm of your hand? Well, buckle up, because Second Life has gone mobile, and this Aussie French resident has a few thoughts to share. It's a tale of pixels, potential, and perhaps a dash of pandemonium. Now, some people have been wondering why I'm not exactly popping champagne over this new app. Don't get me wrong, it's about time Second Life went mobile. It's as necessary in today's world. But Linden Lab's approach, that's where my enthusiasm wanes. I've received quite a few messages from residents asking me to share my thoughts on camera. It seems my lack of excitement hasn't gone unnoticed. So grab your baguette or your Vegemite sandwich because we're about to take a journey through the virtual outback of my concerns. It's time to dive into the curious case of the Second Life mobile app and I am not doing cartwheels over it yet. For starters, the app is currently exclusive to premium members. Now, before you rush to upgrade your account, let me save you some disappointment and money. There's nothing particularly exceptional about the app in its current state. It's more of a work in progress than a polished product. Users have reported mixed experiences. Some say their devices overheat during use, though I haven't encountered this issue with my iPad Pro. What I have experienced, however, are rendering problems that would make a surrealist painter proud. On one occasion, my avatar's skin failed to load, leaving me looking like a walking shadow. Another time I logged in to find myself transformed into a glass sculpture, floating in a void where the world should have been. Now my avatar is loading fine, but I recently updated the terrain of my estate with PBR textures, and they don't seem to load in the mobile app yet. So, the white shiny ground should be PBR textures, just in case you're wondering. Unless your sole purpose is to chat with friends, there's little justification for shelling out for a premium membership just to access this app. Remember, patience is a virtue. The app will eventually be available to all users once it's ready. For now, it seems the mobile experience is more of a buggy beta than a revolutionary feature. As a Gen Xer, I'll admit my relationship with mobile technology isn't always smooth. I still type with one finger on my iPhone, watching in awe as my kids text at lightning speed. Mobile gaming? Let's just say I prefer my trusty Xbox controller. But it's not just about preference, it's about functionality. The way you have to navigate and control things in mobile apps and games often feels clumsy and unintuitive to me. That's why I steer clear of mobile gaming altogether. And this is precisely why I'm skeptical about using the Second Life app for anything beyond basic chatting. The idea of exploring the rich detailed worlds of Second Life on a small screen with touch controls that I'll likely fumble with? It's about as appealing as trying to paint a masterpiece while wearing oven mitts. So for me, any serious exploring or intricate interactions in Second Life will remain firmly in the realm of my desktop setup. The app might be handy for quick check-ins, but for the full Second Life experience? I'll stick to my computer, thank you very much. I'm not on Second Life 24 7 even though I work from home and often have Second Life running in the background while I write. When I do have to go to work, my job is mentally draining. During breaks, I'd rather watch funny TikToks or chat with colleagues than log into Second Life. Now I'll admit there's a glimmer of potential in this app and it comes from an unexpected place, my cozy bed. Picture this, it's the dead of night here in Australia and I'm snuggled up under the covers, probably lost in a dream about my next epic Second Life machinima. Suddenly, my phone buzzes. It's Tunder messaging from sunny Portugal, ready to log into Second Life. In the past, I'd mumble something like, good night, have fun, and burrow deeper into my blanket fortress. The thought of crawling out of bed to fire up the computer? Not even for love, mate. But now, with this app, I could theoretically grab my iPad and join him without sacrificing my warm cocoon. And it's not just about my beauty sleep. Tunda's RL job has him jet-setting more often than a kangaroo on a pogo stick. 
He can't always lug around a laptop, but a phone? That's always in his pocket. So yeah, I can see a few scenarios where this app might actually come in handy. Don't get me wrong, I'm not ready to throw a parade for it yet. But for those middle of the night rendezvous and on the go catch ups, it might just be a game changer. Who knew the path to my heart would be paved with pixels and convenience? But here's where it gets tricky. Linden Lab seems to be banking on this app to attract new users, and that's where I see potential problems. Let's paint a picture, shall we? Imagine a person stumbling upon this shiny new app called Second Life in their app store. It's competing with veteran apps like IMVU and Avakin Life, and naturally, the promotional images make Second Life look absolutely stunning. Our hypothetical newbie is intrigued and decides to give it a go. Now, one of the biggest draws in Second Life is avatar creation. But here's the rub. My avatar didn't come out of the box looking like a perfect Barbie doll. Oh no. It was a labor of love. I've tried countless skins, eyes, searched for the perfect moles and freckles, layered multiple tattoos, and spent hours tweaking my body shape. And that's not even mentioning the variety of body options available now. Which, being third-party creations, won't be available to our newbie right off the bat. For most of us, creating our perfect avatar took time. Days? Weeks? Months even? And let's not forget the financial investment. Sure, there are free options, but it's all too easy to find yourself $100 deep into Linden dollars before you know it. Once you have the avatar, you need the wardrobe to match, right? None of these realities come with a warning label when you download a new app. Some folks might do their research or have heard of Second Life before, but let's be real. The way Linden Lab is presenting the app, people are going to see a shiny new world full of ultra-realistic avatars engaging in all sorts of appealing activities. The reality? Our newbies going to log in looking nothing like the polished avatars they've seen in the promos. They'll teleport to destinations only to find them empty, or worse, populated by veteran avatars who might assume they're an alt and give them the cold shoulder. It's a recipe for disappointment. I can already see the one-star reviews. Nothing like the pictures. Couldn't figure out how to make my avatar look good. Every place I went was empty. And just like that, another potential resident logs out, leaves a bad review, and deletes the app forever. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not some grumpy old avatar shaking my fist at the clouds. I'm all for new people joining Second Life. Crikey, I'm always preaching about Second Life to anyone who'll listen. But I worry that this mobile-first approach might be setting up new users for disappointment rather than delight. So when Oberwolf Linden asks us veterans to behave, I can't help but chuckle. It's not us they need to worry about. Well, they do have to worry about the geniuses who can't read the only available to premium members part and will still try to log in. After failing repeatedly, they'll leave a one-star review because they know they entered the correct details. And leaving bad reviews when the app is basically still in beta? That's about as helpful as bringing a baguette to a knife fight. It's not very constructive, is it? But let's dive deeper into this review debacle because it truly baffles me. People are actually bombarding both the App Store and Play Store with negative reviews. Linden Lab has wisely limited access to premium members during this beta phase. And for good reason. It's easier to manage a smaller crowd when you're ironing out bugs and gathering intel. Imagine if they'd open the floodgates right away we'd probably be drowning in even more misguided reviews. We are letting it out slowly for a reason, okay? We need to walk before we run. We need to get this working before it doesn't. We need people, I'm not gonna say you must leave good reviews on the App Store. Yeah, I want you to review it. But if we get really good reviews, Thing, good things will happen. If we get a whole bunch of bad reviews through the App Store, bad things will happen. So let's just give us the time to get this right. And I understand all the questions. What about this? What could we do this? Those questions are legit. Trying to prove that we can't do something, that would be really bad. 
So let's just all be smart about it and let us get this out there as fast as possible. Enjoy what we're putting out there when we get it out there and give us time to run. Let us walk first, get it into these stores and just build over time the best mobile experience we can. It is not gonna happen overnight. Right now, we're releasing it when we release it to the next group um, of, you know, they're not even testers because it's gonna be in the app store. Um, but we're releasing it as fast as we can and as safely as we can. And we are all part of this, residents especially, because we need your feedback um, so that we can make it better uh, and we need it constructively. If you wanna give feedback, the best way to do it is give us feedback with an idea of how to make it better. By the way, it's 2024, right? This mobile app, if this was easy to build, we would have built this eight years ago. This is hard to do, really hard. It's not a game. It's not just some thing with a bunch of diamonds to play bingo. This is a really hard thing to build and we need to get it going and do it as right as possible. Let us do it slow and steady is my, is my hope. Be on our side, give us the help we need and let's make it so that two years from now we have the best mobile experience on the planet that's that's the goal of course this limited access was bound to ruffle some feathers but it's a necessary step in the development process building an app isn't like pulling a rabbit out of a hat especially for a platform as complex as second life it's a process linden lab is trying to ensure the app delivers and that takes time and feedback. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm all for constructive criticism. I dish it out regularly myself. But leaving scathing reviews for an app that's not even fully released, that's not just unhelpful, it's downright counterproductive. If you've got feedback, there are proper channels for that. The forums are there for a reason, people. Dropping one-star bombs on app stores doesn't help anyone. It doesn't magically grant you access, it doesn't improve the app. And it certainly doesn't make the developers work faster. I've got to say, it really saddens me to see this behavior. It's like we've forgotten how to provide useful feedback. Come on, folks, we can do better than this. Let's save our reviews for when the app is actually out in the wild. And in the meantime, let's use the forums to help make this app the best it can be. After all, isn't that what we all want? As frustrating as these premature reviews are, they're just the tip of the iceberg. The real challenge lies ahead, and it's one that could have far more significant consequences for Second Life's future. Newcomers are already going to face challenges adapting to the complexities of Second Life. But if they're greeted with a sea of negative reviews before they even download the app, we're essentially building a wall between potential new residents and the virtual world we love. It feels like we're losing a battle that hasn't even properly begun. While I appreciate the effort to modernize, I worry that Linden Lab is putting too many eggs in the mobile basket. Second Life's charm and complexity might not translate well to a small screen, and attracting new users without addressing core platform issues could backfire. The app could be beneficial, especially for younger users or for quick check-ins. But as a strategy to grow Second Life, it feels a bit misguided. The mobile app isn't meant to replace any Second Life viewer. It's more of an extension, an add-on to the full Second Life experience. And it's an extension that residents, the folks who truly understand Second Life, have been asking for, even demanding. These are the people who grasp why they might need an app on top of their regular viewer. There's a glimmer of hope that the app might be a lifeline for those with struggling computers. It could also be a handy tool for casual users who aren't into the heavy lifting of building, decorating or other resource intensive activities. But let's not kid ourselves. Second Life will always shine brightest on a proper computer. If you want to truly immerse yourself in the intricate details and stunning visuals of its virtual destinations. That said, for many residents, Second Life is about standing at gigs, 
listening to music and chatting with friends. These activities might translate well to mobile. Although I do wonder how easy it'll be to read profiles from the app. After all, profile browsing is practically a Second Life national sport. In essence, the Second Life mobile app is more of a perk, an extra feature that makes the platform accessible from anywhere. It's like having a pocket-sized portal to your virtual world. Handy for a quick peek or chat, but not quite the full-blown experience. It's the difference between watching a movie on your phone versus in a cinema. Both have their place, but one is clearly more immersive than the other. In the end, while I'll probably use the app occasionally, I can't help but think Linden Lab's resources could be better allocated. There are pressing issues that deserve attention and could truly enhance the Second Life experience. Linden Labs claim that they're protecting the market with these prices. That's about as believable as a virtual unicorn farm. It's absolutely not true that the current pricing structure is protecting the market. And if Linden Lab insists it is, they should be more transparent and show us exactly how. From where I'm standing, there's a strong smell of favoritism wafting through the virtual air. We need a pricing strategy that truly serves the entire community, not just a select few. At the end of the day, we would all benefit from fair and transparent land pricing. It would encourage more people to invest in land, build, create, and truly make Second Life their home. Our profiles could use a major overhaul too. More pics, a better feed. These seemingly small changes could significantly boost Second Life's social aspect, making it easier for residents to connect and share their experiences. Another major area for improvement is the introduction of business profiles. Many Second Life residents run virtual businesses and having a dedicated profile type for this would be invaluable. Additionally, a business pick tab would benefit those who don't need the full extent of a business profile but still want to showcase their commercial ventures. Speaking of profiles, let's talk about groups. The current limitation on group memberships is frustrating to say the least. We shouldn't have to pay for a Premium Plus membership just to join more groups. This is especially true now that groups are being monetized and residents want the option to offer subscriptions. In their current state, groups are far too limited on many levels. Expanding group capabilities and memberships would greatly enhance the community building aspect of Second Life, allowing for more diverse interactions and collaborations. These changes would not only improve the user experience, but also foster a more vibrant and interconnected Second Life community. It's about giving residents the tools they need to fully engage with the platform, whether for social or business purposes. And let's not forget about community promotion. Linden Lab needs to step away from favoritism and start shining a spotlight on the smaller, diverse crowds that make Second Life truly unique. There's so much creativity and passion in every corner of this virtual world. It's high time we celebrated it all. After all, Second Life's strength lies in its depth and community, elements that are challenging to capture in a mobile experience. By focusing on these core aspects, Linden Lab could create a more vibrant, accessible and engaging platform for all residents, new and old alike. That, in my opinion, would be a far more effective strategy for growth than banking everything on a mobile app. Of course, these suggestions are just the tip of the iceberg. They represent a small portion of what Linden Lab could focus on to improve Second Life. I'm well aware that there are quite a few initiatives in the pipeline, as evidenced by the feedback roadmap. It's encouraging to see that Linden Lab is listening and planning improvements. However, I do feel that the issues I've mentioned, land pricing, prim distribution, profile enhancements, and community promotion should be given high priority. These are fundamental aspects that could dramatically improve the Second Life experience for both veteran residents and newcomers alike. Ultimately, while the mobile app has its place, it's these core elements that will determine Second Life's long-term success and growth. 
by focusing on strengthening the foundation of what makes Second Life unique and appealing, Linden Lab could create a more robust and engaging platform that naturally attracts and retains users with or without a mobile app. So there you have it. This is why I'm not that excited about the mobile app, but at the same time, I still feel it's necessary. It's hard to say how long it will be until it's finally ready, but in the meantime, please be patient. And now I'm going to do CEO Oberwolf Linden's job. Refrain from leaving bad reviews, folks. Let's give this app a fair chance to develop and improve. Here's hoping for the best. As we say in France, Ce n'est pas la mer à boire. It's not the sea to drink. Meaning, it's not an impossible task to improve the core second life experience first. Or as we might say in Australia, she'll be right, mate. But only if Linden Lab focuses on the right things. This is Priska Newall from Second Life Spectrum, reminding you to keep exploring, keep creating, and keep making Second Life the amazing virtual world we all love. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on all things Second Life. And as always, I'll see you in world.